Welcome back. So today we're going to start studying a new unit, projectile motion. And let's start off with some notes. Here it says that uh, we've written down that the study of objects, what is projectile motion? It's the study of objects moving through the air under the influence of gravity. So these objects are moving both horizontally and vertically at the same time. Uh, the analysis is separated into horizontal and vertical and the common variable between horizontal and vertical is always time. So that's really important uh, because usually the way to solve these problems and notice the last point here, solutions usually involve solving for time in one orientation then using the time to solve for unknowns in the other orientation. And the orientations refer to horizontal and vertical. So, why don't we go ahead and start with an example problem and then all these notes will probably make more sense. So here's our question. It says, if a rock is thrown horizontally with a velocity of 12 meters per second from the top of a cliff 200 meters high how far from the base of the cliff will the rock land now in order to solve this the first thing we should do is draw a picture so let's go ahead and do that now uh, let's try that again okay so here's our rock we have our initial velocity of 12 meters per second and the rock the the path through the air is going to look something like that okay now we know that this this cliff is 200 meters high but what we're trying to figure out is how far away does it land away from the base of the cliff. So that's what we're trying to solve for. Go ahead and pause the video and just to see that I know we haven't described how to solve these yet but just to see if you can wrap your head around the problem see how far you get before you get stuck and then we'll go over the solution. So pause the video now. Okay, so the solution for this, we always have to break these problems up into horizontal and vertical. Let's start with the horizontal in this case. Now, we know that we're going to have constant velocity horizontal. Now, why is this? The reason for this is because gravity, which is the reason that acceleration exists, is because of the acceleration due to gravity, that only acts vertically. So therefore, horizontally, gravity does not affect the object's motion. So therefore, we do not have acceleration in the horizontal direction, only constant velocity. Now, in terms of, that makes this extremely simple because there is only one equation that describes constant velocity, and that is d equals vt. That's it. It's a very simple equation. And in fact, that's the d that we're trying to solve for. It's the horizontal distance. Therefore, all we need to do to find our answer is multiply two things together. The horizontal velocity, which was given, that's 12 meters per second, easy, multiplied by the time. And now we're stuck. Because nowhere in the question does it give us the time to solve this problem. So now we must recognize that we cannot go further to solve this question using horizontal analysis. So we can now stop our horizontal analysis and begin our vertical analysis. Now for our vertical analysis we do indeed have acceleration. The first thing that I'm going to do is write down what values we are given in in terms of our initial conditions so we are given initially that 
the delta D here vertically is 200 meters. Now be careful here because this object starts at a height of 200 up here and then ends up down here at a height of zero. That means the delta D of this object is at lost altitude and if I say up is my positive direction, that means my delta D is going to be negative 200 meters. <laughs> negative representing the fact that it is a loss of altitude. The next piece of information that I have is my acceleration is due to gravity, which again is, this is kinematics, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I, ha I am actually given another piece of information which is not clearly visible in the question. And that is my initial vertical, everything remember in this column here is vertical. My initial velocity is not 12. That's the initial horizontal velocity. My initial vertical velocity is zero. That's because this object, the rock, is not traveling up or down at this location. Initially, it's not traveling up or down, so it, I have this initial velocity of zero. That's probably the trickiest hidden piece of information to find. Now, let's look at our equations for uh, acceleration. We have this one, one half a t squared plus VIT. We have this one. And we have our last one here. We have V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D. Now you'll notice that of these three equations, and by the way, the other thing which we do not have here is we don't have the time in the air. Of these ones, this one, the first one here, is the one that is, is ha has all of our values that we need. So let's rewrite this equation from here. Actually, maybe I should keep it. Let's, let's keep it under the vertical um, column here. And let's rewrite this equation and solve for time. So if I say delta D equals one half, that's a, that's a two, a T squared. Now the plus V I T, this term, I, I'm not gonna write it. And the reason why I'm not gonna write it is because my initial velocity is zero. So since my initial velocity is zero, this plus V I T term disappears. Now I'm just left with one half A T squared. I'm now going to solve for time. So I can solve for time by saying time equals, and this is just a little bit of algebra. You might need help on the algebra. Uh, some students find this challenging. So multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by a, and then take the square root. So by doing this, I simply move the one half <coughs> Um, once again, you should be able to go from here to here. And so now we can plug our values in. T is going to equal the square root of 2 times negative 200 divided by negative 9.8. And that's going to give us approximately 6.4 seconds. Now that we have this time, we can take this time and put it up into, into the horizontal solution and go 12 times 6.4. And that's going to give us 76.6 .6 meters. And that is now <coughs> our horizontal distance. Notice that we were able to solve this problem by calculating the time on the vertical side 
and then taking that time into the horizontal side and solving for the unknown value of delta d or d. That's how many of these questions uh, manifest themselves. Okay. Remember, if I draw you a little graphic here, it might help. If you have our horizontal analysis and you have your vertical analysis, then these two analyses are connected with time. In other words, the variable of time is the same for both because the time is defined as the time in the air. And that is, the, that is true whether the object is moving horizontally with constant velocity and also under the influence of gravity accelerating vertically. The time is the same. So therefore, these questions are going to involve, you, we might solve for time or under the horizontal orientation and then move it over to the vertical and solve for value or vice versa we might solve for time under the vertical which is what we did here and take that time into the horizontal to get our unknown value of d and solve it that way so let's try another problem and soon you'll see that these are all very similar and pretty easy Okay, so here's our next question. It says, a rock is thrown horizontally with velocity 15 meters per second from the edge of a cliff. If the rock lands 120 meters from the base of the cliff, how high is the cliff? So let's, first of all, before we attack this problem, let's draw a picture here, and that will help you. Here is the cliff, and this cliff we don't know the height of this cliff, but we know that the, the rock, which has an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, it lands 120 meters from the base. So again, if I did the kind of the drawing, that's what it looks like. And so it's asking, what is the height of the cliff, delta d vertical? Go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can solve this. OK, so to solve this problem, let's start with the, let's say, let's start with the uh, vertical analysis first. It doesn't really matter which one you start with first. Because if you get stuck, you just simply go to the other one and, and then get the time and come back. So let's start with vertical first. What are we given? Well, we know that the initial velocity vertically is zero because the 15 was a horizontal velocity. The ball does not start off with any vertical up or down velocity. The other thing we know that vertically the acceleration is negative 9.8 due to gravity. Okay, do we know anything else? Well, we don't really because we don't know what the time is and also we don't know what the delta D is either. And th this is what we're trying to solve for. So let's use the equation. Now remember, there's three equations once again, but the one that has time in it and delta D in it is this one, 1 half AT squared plus VIT. And the nice thing, once again, with this problem is that the VIT part is going to disappear because our initial velocity is zero. So now, all we have to do is solve for that part of the equation. Now, we're stuck because we could say it's 1 half times negative 9.8 times the time squared, but we don't know what the time is. So therefore, let's simply draw a line and begin our horizontal analysis. And when we start our horizontal analysis, you're going to see that we'll be able to figure out what that time is. So for horizontal, we know that it's going to be constant velocity. And by the way, 
We also know for vertically we had acceleration. We forgot to write that down up there before. Not that it's super important, but it's just to remind us. Now we know that the only uh, equation we have is d equals vt, right? That's the constant velocity equation. And let's go ahead and solve for t, because that's what we need. That's what we're missing here. So we'll say t equals d divided by v. And the distance horizontally is 120 meters. And the velocity is 15, which gives us exactly eight seconds of time that this object is in the air for. Now that we know the time, we can take this value and take it back up into the equation on the vertical side and solve for delta d vertically with 1 half negative 9.8 times 8 seconds squared. And when we do that, we're going to get a value of 313.6 meters. Now, the answer here, by the way, is a negative because of this negative sign here. Now, what that means is, is that since our answer is a negative answer, it means that we have a loss of altitude. And that makes sense because the object started up here and ended up down here. So the delta D vertically is negative 313.6 meters. And we've s finished the problem. So you see, very similar type of situation. You always solve for the time in one of the two orientations, take it to the other side, and solve for the unknown value. Hope this was in, uh, a, a, a very clear introduction into projectile motion. See you next time.